It's good to see everybody out. It's always wonderful to be able to come here, to gather together, to worship as we have the opportunity given to us, to come and sing praises with one another, and of course it's good to, uh, we have uh, the brethren that are willing to, of course, uh, watch over Facebook as they're, they're stuck at home, and the brethren who are um, still a little more cautious and, and uh, are outside or in the vehicles, and so... Um, it's good to see that we continue to put God first as we live our lives each day that he blesses us. And so it's encouraging to see you here, and I hope that everybody's been encouraged as we've gone through our worship service so far. There's a lot that has been going on this year. There's just a lot. And a lot that continues to go on as the year continues to go on. And due to everything that has been going on, as we might say, a reaction has a reaction. And people have been reacting a certain way, and we have to ask ourselves if it, it is okay to be act, reacting in a certain way. People see wrong choices being made and choose to do wrong in reaction. And many of the situations, and I'm not going to go into those details today on everything that, that we can talk about that is wrong out there. We all have probably heard on the news, on the radio, on the TV, on Facebook, on any other social media, that of what's going on in the world. But we as Christians, as we see something happening, have to react a certain way. Understanding that we have to look to God and follow in the footsteps of Christ as we make our decisions every day. So what I want to talk about this morning is that two lefts don't make a right. Two wrong choices doesn't correct the first wrong choice. And we need to know that. We need to understand that. And we need to follow the example that Christ has given Again, this is, and in my mindset at least, it is an elementary principle. Something that I have to repeat to my children for them to come to understand. But it's something that is taught to them as children. That as I get onto one child for doing something wrong, and their reaction is, well, he was doing this. As Josiah hits his brother, or as Josiah breaks his toy, or Josiah pokes Kendrick, as one thing happens, or vice versa, Kendrick doing that to them, or Eleanor doing that to them. Just because one did it yesterday doesn't make it okay for you to do it today. Something we teach our children at young age. Have to continuously repeat to them make them understand and learn that. But it's something we are taught at a young age. Understanding just because one person does it, doesn't make it okay for everybody else to do it. Or for you to go ahead and do something different, but that is still wrong to them. Two lefts don't make a right. And I want to open up our Bibles and see that. I want us to open up our Bibles and search the Scriptures to see that we need to be looking to do right always. Always looking to God to make the right decisions. So the first thing I want to make the point is, is that there's, there's two choices. And in different lessons, I know I've brought this point out before, but it's a point that has to be made, a point for us to continuously remember in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. I don't know why I put 17 up there, but 13 and 14. It says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Here it tells us there are two choices. One which leads to life, and one which leads to destruction. Two choices that we have to choose. 
Each day that we live our lives here, we have to make a choice. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Again, the two choices that we're going to have is either to enter into the kingdom of God or not. It is our choice. By the choices we make upon this earth. We choose to go down this path, the works of the flesh. And we're choosing not to be part of his kingdom. And in verse 22... It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So it says, if you truly are a Christian, if you are a child of God, those who follow Christ have crucified these desires of the flesh. These reactions to the temptations that we face. Even when we see wrong going on, we don't react by doing wrong. We can open up our Bible and study it to see reactions to certain things. That we should be praying for our enemies, blessing them, loving them. We can open up our Bibles and see and follow in the footsteps of Christ. Who when was reviled did not revile in return. When was threatened did not threaten back. You have a choice to make. Which one will you make? In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 9 and 10, it says, Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor exhorters will inherit the kingdom of God. Again, makes a list of things of this world. And it says they will not hear the kingdom of God. Those who go and steal will be the will of God. Not to react the way everybody else is reacting. When things come up and when temptations face you, that you treat it differently than everyone else. You go to God in prayer. You open up your Bibles to see what you should do. We don't react. And sin in our anger. But we're angry and we do not sin. We follow our Lord and Savior. Choices that we have to be willing to make. We don't sin because others sin. Just because there's sin out there doesn't mean that it's okay to continue in sin. In Numbers chapter 20, if you will go ahead and turn along with me here, look at the example of Moses here. Again, it's a different situation here in Numbers and what's going on in the world today. But you see the reaction of Moses due to the whining and the nagging and the complaining that children of Israel continue to give. I mean, God has, after all, delivered them from Egypt, shown His power by the plagues, parted the Red Sea, Gave them manna from heaven. Gave them water from a rock. Gave them water in other ways. Gave them meat at the birds of the year. He provided them time and again. As enemies came up against them, he was there and delivered them time and again. But yet as one thing comes up, they start whining some more. They start saying it's better to go back to Egypt, go back to the old ways, go back to worship idols. 
so you read here in verse 7 as they needed some water once more. And so it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together. Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Thus you shall bring water for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. So Moses the rock took the rock from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said, Here now, you rebels, must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with the rock. With his rock. And water came out abundantly in the congregation, and their animals drank. If we stop there, we say, Oh, Moses got water. He got the job done. I understand, that's not what God told him to do. He told him to speak to the rock. Moses was just tired. He was tired of everybody else and what they were doing. Everybody else in their complaining. Everybody else in their reactions. So he gave in to temptation. He made a choice. And do that choice, you read verse 12. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe me to hollow me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring their assembly into the land which I have given them. Moses, who went back to Egypt. Moses, who went in front of the Pharaoh. Moses, who was, you know, continuously doubted by the children of Israel. Moses, who was there following faithfully time and time again, he gives in to temptation. He does not get to enter into the promise. He does not get to enter into Canaan. Out of all the children of Israel here, you know, I was saying, Moses, he deserves it. Look how much he went through. He slipped. He made the choice. And we know he lives faithfully. It seems that, that from what we read and understand of him, he lives faithfully. And I believe he was faithful to the end after this. He was able to repent. He was not able to enter into Canaan. We know that the Lord was able to speak to Moses and Elijah when he went up to the mountain. It gives me the idea that Moses entered into paradise. Guys, we, we slip and fall because of what everybody else is doing. It can cause you to miss out. It can cause you to miss out. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Another example. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Once again, just because everybody else is doing wrong. doesn't give you the right to do wrong. Just because everybody else is sinning. And here, they're not doing anything wrong to us here. They weren't persecuting Uzzah, and Uzzah reacted wrongly and tried to beat them all back up or anything. It's simply that they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant in the wrong manner. They were already doing things wrong. When we study when Moses commanded this to be built, they built it and they had poles for it. The priests were supposed to carry it. No one else was supposed to touch the Ark. They were supposed to carry fire poles. And so as they're bringing it back, they're not carrying it that way. And so because they're not carrying it right, it brings the opportunity or it's about to fall. And so you read with me here in 2 Samuel 6 and verse 6. And it says, And when, the time, and when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah and God struck him there. For his ear. And he died there by the ark of God. Once again, we can sit here and say, well, David, king of Israel, he should have known better. The priest should have known better and told him that they shouldn't be carrying it this way. Why didn't they get struck? You want to study this further, David decides to leave the ark because he, he's scared and afraid and he don't know how he can carry this back. No. 
he leaves it behind, and, and as you, you read further along, it seems he finally comes to understand he needs this on his side for them to be good in battle, to have God on their side, because this is the ark of God. You have to come back and retrieve it the right way. But just because they were carrying it wrong didn't mean the command not to touch it was gone. They were still not allowed to touch it. So when Uzzah touched it, he got struck down. Just because things are going wrong and other people are reacting wrong doesn't give us permission to do it also. We could miss it. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. You turn along with me there. Romans 6. And you read along with me here in verse 1. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it. And again in verse 15, it says, What then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. God loves. Does that mean it's okay to sin? No. I just see Paul right in this Better yet, if Paul was able to speak it, how many times he says he has to speak boldly, rebuke boldly, write more boldly to certain people. We cannot continue in sin. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 15, it says, See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Let no one render evil for you. Have faith in God. I'm not sitting up here trying to okay the actions of those who are doing wrong either. That that's people's thoughts is, well, they've done wrong, something needs to be done. Our faith in God should tell us that vengeance is His and not for our taking. That if they do not change their ways, if they do not repent and pray for forgiveness, that's going to be between them and God. And God will do so much more than you can ever do. But rather, we should be praying that they do see the truth. Setting the example so that they can see how they should be reacting. We have choices that have to be made. We have to continue in Christ, no matter the cost. Continue to walk faithfully to Him. Revelation chapter 2 and in verse 10. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. These are temptations, guys. Temptation he's putting out there for the whole world to see and the whole world to react. What will you choose? And what if you don't have enough time to realize that you've made the wrong choice? <laughs> to ask for forgiveness. That's why we always have to be watching, always be waiting, always looking out, always praying, daily studying to make sure we're making the right choices. To make sure that we're prepared for that day. Because <laughs> two lefts don't make it right. Two, two long choices doesn't make it correct. It's not how we make things right. <laughs> Living faithfully to God is the choice we have to make. Matthew, one last verse for this morning. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, and starting in verse 10. 
Matthew 24 and verse 10 says, And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Does that not sound like today? People who are offended, people who hate one another, people who are yelling at one another. Verse 11, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because of lawlessness will abound, and love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Those who remain faithful will be saved. So I extend the Lord's invitation to any who need to hear this morning. To obey the gospel. You want to react to what's going on in the world. You want to react to the virus. You want to react to anything that's going on outside of, in the world today. Then react by obeying God. By having your sins washed away. By being baptized into Christ and allowing God to add you into his kingdom. Adding you to his church. Knowing that if anything happens and comes your way, God's on your side. Because if he's for you, who can be against you? And if worst case scenario in your life is taken one way or another, you know, because you have faith, that you have a home in heaven. That's the reaction we need to have. If we have culture, if we have reacted to one thing or another wrong. Pray to God for forgiveness. And if you need the prayers of the congregation to help you to overcome these temptations, please let us know. Let us help you in any way that we can. We encourage that. We're not going to sit up here and judge you. We're here to help one another get to heaven. So if we can help you in any way, please let us know as we stand and see. Jesus saw our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we Thank you.